Thank you to Oxymoron Games for sponsoring this video. Wishlist Silence of the Siren now by clicking the link in the description. It's free and it helps the developers a lot. They're a small indie dev team from Czech Republic with 8 developers. Silence of the Siren is slated to come out in 2025 and there's a free playable demo right now on Steam. Hope you enjoy my gameplay video as much as I enjoyed playing it. All right, so if you're not familiar with the genre, Heroes of Might and Magic 3 uh, and Silence of the Siren, it is a turn-based strategy game where you move around with heroes or commanders with certain sets of troops. You can level up and interact with the world map. Let's read this first. The two neighboring islets were not a concern until the ancient light bridge had suddenly powered up. Now everyone can cross them and threaten our way of life. The wise thing to do would be to strike first. To ensure peace, of course. Red player's turn. So, uh, you, you start with a castle and a commander with troops inside and you can hire additional commanders and then go around and interact with the map. And there's gonna be resources and neutral camps and items all around. Just like in Here's the Might of Magic. I like how it looks and the music is pretty cool. Uh, so uh, this is a demo with a specially crafted map. There is no procedural generation in this. Every time I restart this, it's gonna be the same, which is all fine. Really the point is here to start learning how to enjoy the game and start learning what the game is about. Uh, we're gonna take a look at combat. We're gonna take a look at city building. Okay, let's go check out the city. General Truda learned special abilities from the academy at this base. So my webcam is a little laggy in this screen. It's probably an early game optimization issue, which uh, I guess I wouldn't worry too much about, but just so you know, that's why my camera is lagging a bit. So this is where you can build your buildings, but it's not the only place where you can build your buildings because you can also build buildings outside of your city, but this is what you can build here. So you've got your tax bureau, which is your primary resource generation ramp. Generate a thousand Aura coins per turn, already been built. And they mentioned that for this YouTube demo, there's gonna be a little bit more built up in your town already, so you don't start at ground, you know, square zero. Interior control office has been built already, and you can go for the overseer's office, generates additional Aura coins per turn. So let's get that. And that's another level on top. And this is where we can train all our units. Okay. All, 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 all. all. Right. Send our units to our army. Uh, there are mods that do the same for Heroes of Might and Magic, but in Silence of the Siren, this has been built into the engine. So the units are pretty cool. Let me show you guys. I mean, I've, I've taken a look at them before. We've got the rattling gunner. I think it's best actually to show the units in battle. So let's just go have a fight. Uh, when you hover over an army, it's gonna say how much of a chance you have against that army. Uh, when you hold alt, you can see which parts of the map you can interact with. The resources, aura coins, limerite, alloy, uh, biomass, you've got radiant, and then you've got fusion core. Let's go down here. Oh, a teleport. I wonder where it leads. Bill, builder ancient data scroll. Do it too often, your brain crawls out of your ears. Strangely, this warning also applies to inorganic life forms in their cognitive centers. The ancient primals had no trouble deploying what some might consider invasive data transfers. So it's a scroll that took out data from someone's head. If you do it too often, they die. The commander will le learn or level up using the builder's uh, level up the builder skill. So we use it now. So now if we go take a look at our general, we started with one skill, which was called Globetrotter. Learning or leveling up Globetrotter lets you learn a variety of exploration abilities. After learning this skill, visit the base with an academy to learn more abilities. So if we go to an academy, we can pick up Rush, Deathmark, Battlecry, show resources, show treasures. And we just made contact with an ability, uh, the builder. Adds more options to the structures the commander can build on the world map. Makes object upgrades cheaper. You can build turrets, you can garrison them. And it's currently at level one and I think it becomes level two. You get the option to level it to level two uh, when you are level five hero level and then to level 10 when you get level three. 
uh, to level 3 when you get level 10. Production upgrades of buildings on the map cost 10% less. So I thought about how I wanted to like discover this game. And of course I was thinking, how is it different or similar to Heroes of Might and Magic? Since you can see there's inspiration there. Though this is of course in space and with a number of different unique game ideas. But this isn't a comparison video. So I'm not constantly going to look at the comparison. Every game is inspired by something. I'm not going to say like, oh, this is the same. This is different. Let's just see it for what it is. Because not everyone has played that game as well. The Primal's toy can hold the whole library, but sadly your weak mind can take no more. You already feel like someone rubbed your skull, rubbed your skull with a wire brush from the inside. It's a waste, even more because it's single use. The commander will learn the force field ability. I can't use it now, but I can collect it. And then it goes to my inventory. Why can't I use it? The commander doesn't know the skill to learn this ability. So I need to get more skills, which means I need to level up. Uh, so I discovered something when I was trying out the game. You get experience for everything you do, which is a little different than just killing things. You get experience for just moving around, picking up things, using your commander, and even discovering the fog of war. So now we're on a building zone. An area prepared for quick construction of various structures. Commanders build here for half the price. So then you can build a turret, a long range dog that is kind of like a watchtower because it keeps the fog of war at bay, and the fog of war at bay. A boosted mining probe keeps mining until a visiting commander destroys it and recovers all the mined resources. It sounds like the opponent can just come in and destroy it, and you can come in and salvage it yourself. So it's whoever finds it. So it's risky to build it in contested zones, but it might be good to build it nearby yourself. And you've got the superior outpost, leave guards. You can send units there directly from a base, remotely. So it sounds like the best min-max that I can do, presumably, is the mining probe. So let's go ahead and build that. And that does not take away my final movement. So we can keep moving. Data fragment. Ah, this is like the treasure chest. You can get gold, or in this case, the Aurorium or something, uh, or get XP. So let's get the XP. Okay, that's our first turn. We've also built a building already in the city. And then we can still hire extra commanders. Itgrain, the sailor, or General Farad. As the revolution elevated many individuals unsuited for their role, the first big purge reversed the process. Many untouchables quickly learned the limits of their immunity. Though the corruption scandal that kicked the stool from under Farad's feet was partially constructed, and there are much bigger fish in the pool filled with dirty money, some children must be eaten first. <laughs> Isn't that something moles really do? Energy fields are unstable and unpredictable places. Only a handful of freaks are willing to risk a vessel riding their treacherous waves. And Yggdrain is one of them. Looking to explore uncharted, isolated islands and unknown energy fields? Yggdrain is your guide. So then they have a starting army. If there's a golden border, it's an upgraded unit. And if there's silver border, they're unupgraded. Just like in Heroes of Might and Magic, every unit has a unupgraded and upgraded form the upgraded form gets a special passive or active and they also get more stats like health and damage uh, so let's get this one it comes with army that i cannot click or interact with so we got the sailor they immediately pick up something from the academy namely if they have globetrotter skill they pick up these three abilities if they have biotic skill they can pick up light and armor and if they've got techie skill they can pick up long range artillery and what does she have she has Globetrotter. So, tracks enemy commander in the fog of war. Targeted commander loses movement points as well. The music slaps. The music slaps as hell. Funky. Yeah, it's kind of like uh, cyberfunk. We can hire some units. 
Oh, we hired them and put them all on the other guy. He's got Custodian Cleric. 11 health, 3 damage, 5% chance to crit. So, no morale mechanic. They just have a chance to crit, XCOM style. 2 defense, 7 move, 4 initiative. And you can split them like this. You can either right click them or you can press on the little I to split them and see their info. And left clicking is moving them. Alright. Let's go pick up some doodads. Rush combat manual. The commander will learn rush. Now let's collect it and save it for our other commander. We have... I can't see my amount of resources now because it interlaced with the YouTube demo text. But I think it's 18,000 or 12,000, I think. Uh, I guess I'll just get the XP. Interestingly, you can hoard it as well. Instead of having every commander pick up their own gold or XP. Gold is communal, of course, but it, I should name it by what it's called, which is... I can't hover over it now, actually, because of the expanded UI. But... Uh, you can actually save it and give it to someone else, which is cool. Yeah, it's nice. Exactly. It's nice you can keep them for the main hero. And I think and, and somehow it's going to be a comparison to Heroes of Might and Magic anyway. It looks like they've dispensed with the mechanic, which maybe some older home games had as well, where your movement speed is dictated by your slowest unit. They have their own movement. So I think you generally start with 20 movement points and I just picked up 15 bonus. So I wonder if uh, that's actually going to add on top. No, I think I wasted it. I think I wasted it because I didn't have any missing movement points. So the 15 uh, just went to waste. No pain, no gain. Yeah, you always get XP for movement. Add 50% to the amount of picked up resources. Oh, nice. Does the game have combat? Yeah, I'll show it soon. I know most people want to see combat fast because it's a really important part of the game. A large stock of random resources used now. Alright, pick up some Lima, right? And, and we can pick up more commanders as well. But let's just go next turn so you guys can see combat. Yellow player Fossorians, red player Fossorians. Oh, so there's someone else that's the same sieve as I am. What are you, bugs? I am moles. Moles and rats. So underground dwelling, earth animals, gone to space and probably got, I don't know, so smart via nano evolution machines or something. <laughs> I picked up eight biomass. Uh, let's go through the teleporter. What's this? Board, hello. Visited state, not visited. This house of ill repute is well respected throughout the ranks and raises morale by 20. Oh, so there is morale for one cycle. Uh, a cycle is four turns. So in the bottom right, you can see we are on the second turn or the second part of a cycle. This is the current day night cycle. Four turns is one cycle. And every cycle you can hire new units. So if you go to your city, right now we can't recruit any units because we bought them. So in turn five, can buy new units again. Uh, let's go fight someone. Let's see. So that's our mining probe. Keeps mining. But I don't know how much... You know, I don't know how much resources they have now. Oh, two. They have two alloy. Oh, okay. Two alloy in one turn. So we keep them uh, mining. This... Okay, let's go fight, yeah? We want, we all want to see the fight. Monster army. Hazard moderate. So that means it's hard but doable. Oh. I cannot... Oh, I can interrupt walking. Okay, good. So you can interrupt walking by clicking left click again. Not right click. I tried both. Uh, how do we organize our units? Let's just go. Here we go. He's fast. He's got the initiative. So you can hold shift to see how far he can move next turn. 
which is almost uh, the entire map. A bit loud. Yeah, I know I turned it up because I wanted to hear. And it looks like the FPS optimization for my webcam while showing this is a little worse than usual, but you're gonna have to try and look past the lack of fluidity my camera has. And if you hold control, the units become small so that you have better overview. Uh, let me see. What do we got? So we have Commander Cadet. Oh, Commissar Cadet. Which I think is my main... No, it's not my main hero, is it? I think my main commander doesn't fight. This commander has not yet learned a skill that lets them learn special abilities. Oh, okay. So it looks like our combat abilities are split between Techie, Biotic, and Psyker. And music is a banger again, huh? I like it. It looks like we have 72 energy to cast spells, but we don't have any battle spells. And Globetrotter, as the name suggests, is world map interactive spells. If I attack him, it says, I will kill none of them. I will deal 104 damage, which makes me wonder how the hell much health do they have? Oh my God, 120. So is that an estimate or is that the minimum? It says it's gonna do 104 damage. So I'm kind of a nerd and I tend to pay attention to the detail before I look at the global uh, effect. So you may hate me for this or you may love me for it, but it is who I am. I wanna know why it's gonna be 104 damage. So I do 30 or 32 damage with a 25% chance of critical. I have four units, which means if it's four times 30 with no crit, that's 120. But it says 104. Does that mean he, ha he has 16 armor? Close, 18. So 32 times four. 32 times four, 120 is 128 minus 18. 110, 104. I guess it's somewhere in between. It must be the average of my two attacks. And so I wonder if I'm going to do exactly 104 or if it will be very nearby it. But the thing is, when he hits me back, he's going to do 30 times 35 damage, which, if I'm not mistaken, is a thousand roughly. And I have a health pool of 125 times four, so I die. So I'm going to issue a wait command. Okay, this guy can't reach, it's a Liberator. 270 health, got two. Can attack up to three enemies standing next to one another. Cool. Got a cleave attack. I got uh, two of it. And there's a number seven in front of it, which I assume means tier seven. So it's a high tier unit, Liberator seven. I gave him a way to command as well. The Commissar Cadet is number six. Is it tier six? I think so. Yeah, I think it's all their tiers. Yeah. So they've also been ordered to tier at the moment. Okay, then we've got the Tunnel Worm, who would do 98 health and damage. They say the hazard is moderate. I now understand that to mean you're probably gonna lose over half your army, which is of course undesirable, but we can always start over. This one has no special abilities yet. I mean, I'll show you what it looks like when I attack. I'm gonna die. And then we've got the Earthshaker shoots a torpedo, which explodes at the end of the round, causing burning damage. And it's AOE. So if I attack here, and then I move in close for a melee attack, I'm gonna damage myself, presumably. So I should aim behind him so that I don't uh, hit myself. Oh, look, it's burrowing underground. And it's... Interestingly, you cannot use it to front-end damage to soften them up for your melee attacks. It only deals damage at the end. Kind of a big downside. I killed two. We're safe now. 
inflicts bleeding, turns into an uncontrollable beast that attacks the enemy that is closest twice. Okay. That, that attacks the closest enemy twice. Uncontrollable. Okay. And he has a special. That's his special ability. Okay. And then the rattling gunner is also ranged. Kills two. So now my weighted units can move in. Oh, but I blocked them with the Meat Boy Shredder. So now I can't do a follow-up attack with the heroes that waited. Oh, he's slow and ponderous. He's a big boy. Wait, then I moved into my explosion range. Let's see if friendly fire is a thing. This one is gonna have to wait. No specials, right? Just a passive. He can't wait anymore, so I have to pass the turn. Oh, no friendly fire. Okay. So okay. Uh, that hurts. Yeah, so this is probably not a fight you want to take. But at least you guys get to see the fight. We'll just start over. Moderate is not a threat level you want to engage in. That's the torpedo. Did you see that? There's probably no fire because it came from underground. No friendly fire here either, despite his cleaving attack. Can I move and then shoot? Nope. Can't reach him. Hold control to see. Ah, there we go. He's got 13 left. Okay, you, you guys have seen the battle. Let's start over because I just lost everything. Not having a hero feels odd. Heroes of Might and Magic doesn't have a hero in fight. Uh, the hero is the spellcaster. Okay, let's make sure to pick up all the extra units from the recruitment center. Hire all. Nice that they have a button for that, right? And let's also pick up all the units from the other commander. So we hire him, we upgrade all the units, and then we give them. Okay. And we can probably keep doing that. It's the best way to add units now. Go to the city. Oh, that's... I didn't mean to take my commander there. I can just go here. All right. Then we take him here. We hire another commander. Get this guy. And we should be able to pass over the units. There we go. Everything to him. Okay, that's the biggest army he can have. Still not enough to take on the monster army mechanicals there. Let's go through the teleporter. Okay. This is by a small uh, Czech Republic uh, development team called Oxymoron Games. And you, there's a playable demo on Steam right now. I'll collect this. I think it actually said, as I collected it, cannot exceed 100% capacity. Okay, Supreme Leader, where are we going? By tradition, the Supreme Leader's past is glorious, but mostly fabricated. You know, it actually reminds me a bit of Age of Wonders Planetfall as well. Because there's a bit of sense of humor in the flavor text, which I like. The word mostly is of utmost importance, because this is not your usual fat, spoiled child of a degenerate dynasty. This fat, spo this fat spoiled degenerate was thrown to the meat grinder of the biggest and boldest revolution in the Fossorian history and emerged victorious. He's dangerous, perhaps the most dangerous Fasorian alive, which is the name of this Sith.
collect. We'll give this to him. Uh, give this to him as well later. Okay, and turn. Oh, and we can still upgrade our base. Okay, let's go. This looks dope, Grubby. I'm a big harm enjoyer. I'll check th out the free demo. Yeah, it, it looks uh, very nice. I have... I, I want to do a little bit more exploring because... We haven't interacted with opponents yet. We haven't really interacted with building things a lot yet. How many races are in the demo? I'm aware of two. So if we take a look at what they have on YouTube. Uh, let me see. We should be able to see it if we keep playing as well. But Silence of the Siren YouTube. So you've got the rat race and there was well we'll we'll see it we'll just keep playing we'll keep playing equip this monster army not a chance of course because we don't have any army here uh, the purple bar is their experience, green is their movement point, okay. What is this? This house of ill repute is well respected and raises morale by 20. Can we figure out what morale is? Good morale gives a chance to each unit to gain one extra move each turn. Morale increases, so it's the same thing, right, as in Ham. Morale increases if all units and their commander belong to the same race. Bonus from the chess master skill and effects from items and visited buildings also apply here. They're moles, yes, but there's rats too. Rat is actually a tier one unit. You can increase uh, animation speed for commanders walking on the map. An area prepared. Yeah, we'll make the uh, we'll make this. Uh, it's cheaper now. It was cheaper to build on these spots. Okay, right click makes it a builder. What's this? Ability Academy. Visiting commander can learn any ability. Requires ability skill, can be used once per commander. What ability would you like to learn? Show treasures. Ability cast 10 energy points. Immediately discovers valuable items in the area around the commander discovers chests so we learn this and now we can use it show treasures okay and that costs 10 energy which re regenerates how fast energy replenished each turn 13 really that's cheap so, can I just keep casting things? No. Ability used already this round. Okay, you can only do one per turn. Really, it's just duct tape. Foil, plexiglass, or a breather. Imagine the poorest workers in Jupiter Belt cannot afford even this basic level of protection. Get involved. Even a small amount may change lives. Protects the commander against the effects of poisonous clouds. Activation cast 8 energy. Okay, that is all our movement. Why can't I move here? I have movement, but I think the terrain is too rough to move. And that's probably why it is in red. Because it's rough terrain, it's not on a road. Okay. What do we build? Every green plus is something that we can build. Remotely teach abilities to commanders. Oh, so you don't have to come home in order to teach from the academy. 
Add one chosen ability to the academy for a fee. You can construct this building for 5,000 Aura coins. Defensive tower, improves wall and gate strength, adds two ranged platforms and one defensive slot. A turret, two hidden auto turrets on the siege battlefield, minefield, again siege defense. A replicator, generate one biomass and one radiance per turn, we have zero of those right now, that seems nice. Allows commanders to instantly travel between bases, tunnel ban. That's very on brand for moles. Adds one more commander for hire. Oh, so you got options from three. Then we can get the upgraded earth shakers or a worm nest. Now we're in cycle two, so we probably want to build the worm nest before the next cycle. So we get replicator now and then we'll get the worm nest so we can start buffing those up. And turn. The battle, hazard low. All right, maybe our first victory against NPC. Here we go. So what are they? A slurm, <laughs> a slug, worm, slurm. 26 health, nine attack, 15 critical, four defense. It doesn't define how defense works, so I have to def figure it out myself. We still don't have any battle spells. How far can he move? Not far. Yeah, my camera lags in battle. What can you do? You're gonna have to look past that as an optimization that will probably be fixed later. My game isn't lagging, it's just... Too much uncapped FPS in the game, which makes OBS unable to handle it. Let's see. He is gonna do nine, like 90 damage, and I have 270 health, so I should be able to tank a hit from him. And I also have 32 to 34 defense, which surely ca cannot make it so that he deals no damage at all. We'll see. We'll see how much damage we take. Either it's going to be zero or like one or a half, or it's going to be like 30% reduction. In which case we will take uh, 60 damage. So it's a learning moment. What if he's not there anymore by the time the shot lands? So you have to actually predict and shoot. Yeah, I'm going to miss. Okay, that was 70 damage. So that makes it feel like the 30 is perhaps a percentage expression. Thirty percent damage reduction. That's what it feels like. It's got four units left. Yeah, it exploded. So okay, so that's how the skill expression is in Earthshaker. You gotta predict where something is gonna go. I would kill four, which is all of them. There was crit as well. Ah. And crit says 15. Does it mean when he crits, it's 15% bonus damage? Or is it 15% chance to crit for a damage unspecified? Either double or some inherent crit damage. I don't know. Double damage, you think? Enemy has been defeated. Commander earned 1050 XP. Losses none. Defeated army losses 35. Okay, level up. I feel much stronger now. General Trudas leveled up. You can improve their skills and attributes. So you make two choices every time. You level up an attribute and you level up a skill. And you cannot go level 2 in existing skills yet until your commander becomes level 5. So now you're just adding new ones. So you're adding one at level 2, 3, 4. And then at 5 you can upgrade one of those. Explorer permanently adds 4 movement points. And again, 4 when you upgrade it. Very strong. Engineer, add 5 energy point daily recharge with each skill level. 
which do not these two do not remotely seem equally powerful to me <laughs> at least the energy has not yet become a bottleneck so daily recharge of energy not good yet but of course if i start using them in you know spells in in combat this may seem a lot more meaningful and then sniper five percent bonus range damage so it's 100 percent going to be explorer and for the attributes leveling up ability strength increases the commander's energy buffer and makes their abilities more powerful how more how much more powerful just more powerful combat power combat power gets added to your units to damage and defense so it's armor and offense in one exploration proficiency increases the number of movement points and vision okay we'll take that too so i should be 24 without the attribute i picked and i am still 24 which means that attribute was a scam you lied to me rush is 30 energy is this the first time you try silence of the siren it has some really interesting ideas this game yes it is have you played it before brubby gives the commander extra movement points ability strength increases this effect plus three movement okay i'm currently 21 out of 24 yes it was a good game nice i'm playing a special for youtube demo right now where it starts me in a slightly advanced stage in the game where i have tier 7 tier 6 already i guess to optimize the uh, people that play it their time in, in discovering certain mechanics aha uh -huh. limerite quarry we own this structure now what are your favorite new mechanics that are new to the game brubby we own this structure now and there are upgrades available. Oh, so it's not just like a, a lumber yard or, or like a gold mine. You can do upgrades, which makes it feel a little bit like Company of Heroes and Dawn of War, no? Where you take a resource generating outpost, if you will, a control point, but then you can spend money to upgrade it. I like the worm unit that had a delayed AOE attack. Yeah, the Earthshaker that shoots a torpedo. I like it too. It's. Uh, forces you to think where enemy units are going to be cool concept plus one limerite produced each turn which we buy for 2700 slash four one limerite extra or adds 10 defensive turrets plus 10 more for each builder level 10 defensive turrets and three slots for defending units that sounds wild. Okay, well, I'll take the resources for now. Yes, I did, Electric. There's a stash of useful resources just lying there. Okay, so holding Alt, you can see where you can go. Uh, turns out this is not Fog of War. This is ungoable area. So that's as far as we can go with this commander in this direction. Yep, I've tried that too, Onitskin. An area prepared for quick construction. So we can build another mining probe. This commander does not have the builder skill. He has techie. Ah, lets you learn tech combat abilities. Maybe this is a better, better hero to fight with then. What kind of strange plant is this? I wonder what will happen if I stay next to it until the next phase. There's almost no magnesium in these torches, but liquid metal nano injections that burn in the oscillatory vacuum when approaching zero G doesn't fit on the label. Clears the fog of war around the commander. Collect. We don't use that now. Or at this. Carnivorous fauna, dormant. This area looks a bit sussy. Better stay away from that creepy abomination. Inflict status effect chomped, movement reduced. He did not chomp me though. 
Oh, because he's dormant. That's why. Fuel stock refills 15 movement, cannot exceed 100. Yeah, we'll use it now. Ah, uh, we cannot pick up in his zone of influence. You can't cheese the resources all around them. Add two movement points. Like forever? Oh, it's an item. It's a permanent item. Wait, activation cost? I have to activate it? Equipment, artifacts. Oh, I have 9 out of 20. I have 10 out of 20. I had 12 just now, I feel like. Maybe not. So the activation cost is 23. Which means the first time you equip it, uh, you spend the 23, and then it's just a permanent passive buff. Okay, interesting. Hello, Mr. Commander, sir. Are you interested in our legally obtained slaves, uh, assets? Heavily guarded by mole units to protect their merchandise, anyone can buy what they see. What's on offer changes every phase, so don't hesitate. Every phase, not just every cycle, so literally every turn. So don't hesitate if you see something you fancy. Attacking gives commanders more free enslaved units, but will disable the camp for three cycles. Hazard, not a chance, because I only have one unit. Buy slaves. Meet boy shredder. So he costs 160. Finish. How much are meat boy shredders normally? 160. So it's the same price, neither discount nor am I getting fleeced. And pressing space re-interacts with the camp you're standing on. Legally obtained slaves. Yeah, we'll get some shredders. 13 shredders. The bright one, which is not our faction. The first of the xenomorphic species. They raise questions about the very origin of the children of the source. I think this is uh, Children of the Source is the other faction. I don't know if there's known more than two yet. By morphology, they are clearly not a part of an origin species. And some scientists speculate that they were assimilated in some distant conquest. Of course, any such speculation is blasphemy. This portrait should be animated. Uh, could be. And then you have slurms. Surprisingly intelligent and agile creatures that will probably replace a man's best friend. Poor monkeys. Let's hope that they don't take that personally and won't start an uprising or something like that. Man's best friend are now monkeys. That changed rapidly. What's this? Limerite? Ah, okay. They cost Limerite. So Limerite is an important resource for cer certain units. No special abilities. Shots are always precise, which I think means they have no distance uh, debuff. I'll take them all. There are upgrades available. Okay, so I can still build uh, this turn. Are you playing the demo? I'm playing the demo, but not the same one that you can play on Steam right now. It's slightly more advanced. It's the YouTube demo. Okay, so the phase is about to end into the next cycle. So I'm going to build... Oh, wait, I don't have enough. Ah, I don't have enough resources for the worm nest. All right, that's fine. Unlock bio abilities. Unlocks a selection of Globetrotter abilities to learn. Tech abilities. And a sweatshop already built. I guess we'll just uh, upgrade the Earthshaker factory then. So we're going to see our first cycle.
Our movement is 24, yeah. Okay, holding down Alt continues to be useful, so you know what you interact with. We leveled up. We can get more exploration, like visibility and movement speed, or we can get combat power, ability strength. Let's get combat power. Sniper, chess master. Chess master is like tactics, allows you to position your army at the beginning of battle. Allows the commander to reclaim some of the materials of a defeated army. A defeated army is made of. 33% of maximum resources available to be scattered. That, that sounds insane to me. Of course, so is deployment. Watchtower. Eight limerite, nice. 20 energy, we don't need to use that yet. We can build the worm nest now. Yeah, I don't know if nighttime has an effect on gameplay. They asked me to check out the tutorial, but I just launched the game and I discovered everything myself then i started the tutorial to check it out and it was the same things i already discovered so i feel like you can just get the hang of it but there is a tutorial that teaches you what everything is you guys know me i i like to try and just figure out the game myself i don't mind if some parts of the game are a bit obfuscated uh initially it's the joy of discovery See beyond the horizon. Immediately reveals the surrounding area and keeps it watched. Increases your visibility radius and provides extra info about the enemies in range. For 2500 aura coins? It's, it is a funny concept that every neutral doodad building can be upgraded. The stream isn't, the video is, Martin. Let's cast some abilities. Rush gives movement points, show resources, death mark, battle cry. Treasures. Uh, we'll do rush soon. Okay. You can also put it on fast cast. In which case, where does it go? Use abilities. We'll do rush. And we got all of our energy back. Level up. Combat power. Negotiator. Some units from each stack in the neutral army will join your commander before the battle. Improves your unit's melee attacks. Visibility range. Info about hostile armies and predicts locations of undiscovered treasures. Commanders unaffected by traps and environmental hazards. I'll do Negotiator. Yeah, before the battle. So you attack a troop of army and then some of them betray their friends. And then you fight the rest. It's like the windmill. 500 aura coins per cycle. Okay, we're going through the teleporter. A bunch of monsters. We don't F with them. Look, that must be one of the mysterious keepers. Data fragment. Leveled up. Exploration proficiency. And biotic spells. Melee attacks. Engineer. Add five energy point daily recharge. Yeah. We'll do biotic. Knowledge ready to be downloaded. Choose an ability from the biotic skill to learn. Ah. So you unlock like a, a school of magic and they immediately give you one ability, even before you go to the academy. So you can at least do something. Interesting. Summons a local creature to the battlefield. The creature attacks enemy units. Light and armor increases movement range of friendly units. Target a single stack. Immediately turns units into their second tier targets. What? But this is a battle skill, though. 
So it's kind of like in Hearthstone Battlegrounds, the Naga Pirate, which for one battle turns a unit golden. It doesn't permanently upgrade them. Let's do Lure Local Beast. Do it? Well, I'm not in battle. All right, let's try that Watchtower upgrade. See how much it is. Whoa, okay. That's pretty big, but useless <laughs> because of all the dead space. I want an outcropping of land and it showed me dead space all around and now it's showing me more dead space. But <laughs> it, it does show little snippets across the land. But that's 2,500 uh, resources that are coins that I'll never get back. So supposedly you can build buildings anywhere, but they're cheaper on the building platforms. So this is a building zone, but you can build in other places. Let me see, is that true? Or did I misunderstand? Maybe it's not true. Let's go uh, build something in our base and then we'll go next turn. Liberators? Oh. Oh, I don't have a liberator hang hanger. I just start with some. Yeah, I'd like to be able to recruit my tier 7. It's all of the money, though. I get only 2,500 per turn. I will get it. Uh, hi, is this kind of like a Heroes of Mighty Magic game? Yes. I would say it's fair, fair to say extremely heavily inspired by... But with twists, it's uh, science fiction, it's in space, uh, all new shifts, lots of the core mechanics that people fall in love with. Obviously, 3DO is no longer making Heroes of Might and Magic sequels, and some of the ones they made really weren't all that good. So I would say, if you're going to be inspired by any game and want to make games like it, then this would be uh, a really good game to follow after, as it's so beloved. Does the game have random map generator? The demo does not, but uh, I would assume, though that is just an assumption, that they would. We can actually look at the Steam page to look at their mission statement. Wouldn't that be useful? Silence of the Siren, a turn-based sci-fi strategy game that combines exploration and exciting clashes on the battlefield Take control over several different species, raise powerful armies, and destroy your opponents. Now that's a cool gameplay video. Uh, Silence of the Siren is a turn-based strategy game where several different spacefaring civilizations are fighting over control of a distant star system. Explore what's left on the planet and secure resources to build mighty cities. Raise powerful armies and defeat your opponents on the battlefield. That is lore. You guys ask technical questions. Are there answers? Several different factions. Skilled commanders. New skills, lead them into battle. Learn movesets. Sci-fi, rich world. Collect collect stuff. Level up. Uh, several different species. Several. More than two. Old school strategy game. Modern controls and intuitive UI. Careful, there's cartoon violence. So, uh... I don't think that 100% answers whether there's going to be... It, it does not answer whether there's going to be randomly generated maps. Graphics are kind of okay for low-budget studio. They have like... Uh, I checked their uh, LinkedIn page. They have like 2 to 10 developers. So it is definitely a small-scale indie development team. So yeah, you're not going to get... 
you know, triple A, $50 million budget games or $100 million budget games. No, not cartoon violence. Yeah, I know, it's the worst kind of violence. Units here are available for recruitment. Uh, okay, cool. Does it have multiplayer in the demo? I don't think so. It's it's not ready for that. Single player autosaves, death scenarios. Like I can save the game, right? Go to the main menu. Start the demo, load game, tutorial, manual, roadmap. Ah, here we go. This may answer some things. Now I know this is kind of small for you guys. So let's zoom it in. Core mechanics. Exploration, basis, and economy. This is the closed beta 2023, which I didn't play last year. So that's what it was then. Uh, and maybe I'm slightly beyond that now with the 2024 early, not early access launch yet, but at least um, let's say YouTube demo build. Two factions, Fasorians and Children of the Source. Detailed tutorial, four skirmish maps with seven biomes. Or biomes, I don't know how to say that. Tech, bio, and globetrotter abilities. 18 skills for commanders, 50 collectible items, 30 interactive objects. Building mechanics on the map. Base siege battles, auto combat, three difficulty levels. Roadmap for 2024. Early access launch. Most features carry over from beta, but with complete graphics. The first mission of a story campaign, nine skirmish maps, more interactive objects, hot seat multiplayer, hot seat multiplayer. Biome, ah, and tons of bugs. <laughs> and then the road to full release next year, five playable factions, story campaign for most of the factions, orbital and underground layer, ah, three layers. Orbital layer, interesting. One more ability tree. Unique, neutral enemies. More skirmish maps with more biomes and interactive objects. Localization to several world languages, map editor, hopefully online multiplayer, Steam Workshop and mod support. So they do not specify if there's going to be randomly or procedurally generated maps or if there's mod support but they do say map editor which is kind of like mod support and hopefully online multiplayer so i think that answers a lot of questions that uh, that we had enter Okay, let's play a little faster. Nearest building will forget that this commander has already visited it. Memory wiper. <laughs> okay. Interesting. So you can choose when to use it and then you can double dip on a uh, on a building. That's an interesting concept I've never I've never seen before. We're level five. So doesn't that mean we can upgrade one of our skills? No? Choose a skill to level up. Is Brawler something I have? No. I thought level 5 I can double down. But uh, we'll just do Biotic then. And Combat Power. Learn a Biotic skill. Acid Projectile. Field Promotion or Light and Armor. Let's do... Uh I, I'm curious about Acid Projectile, but I'm more curious about Field Promotion. So let's go for a fight, Hazard Negligible. And we're gonna try out upgrading our Tier 7 stack to their Tier 2 form. Well, their Tier 7.2. Some of the army you're about to fight would like to join you for a price, of course, depending on your negotiation skills. Not interested? You can let them run. There's no room in your army. Let them run, fight the rest. So seven wanna join me. I don't know. Can I not disband units? Yeah, you can disband units so you can make space, but obviously I'm not gonna make space for seven troopers, so we'll fight the rest. Yeah, I love the music too, uh, Blazed Aris. Music is very important to me in a game. 
Commander Cadet. Right click unit for details. Um, let's cast spells. Field promotion. Look. And they are upgraded. Now, I don't think they're gonna be still upgraded by the end of combat. After combat. That would be sick. So it's just for this fight. So now they have 320 health instead of 270. They do more damage. They have like 5 to 10 armor more defense. Pretty insane. Uh, Cam is laggy during this screen. I'm aware of it. Thanks for letting me know. I think this Liberator can take them all down by himself. Let's see, they can move this far, so we just shoot here. Which is not in range of everyone yet. But by the end of their turn, they will probably be there. Oh shit! They're range dude! <laughs> No, they're not. Nope, I just straight up missed. Ah, okay, I hit one of them. Good. That's great. It says how much damage they do here. I know I'm kind of covering that. I'll hide chat for a bit. Uh, mass Liberator attack trooper dealing 211 damage. 10 units have perished. Dealing 169 of critical damage. Thanks to high morale, Rattling Gunner can move again. Make sure FPS is limited. I know, but uh, the game doesn't give that option yet. But thanks for trying to help. Oh, he killed one. He killed a meat boy shredder. Okay. 1400 XP. And we scavenged one biomass. Really? That's not how I expected that's gonna work. Allows the commander <laughs> to reclaim some of the materials the defeated army was made of. 33% or maximum, I think they mean of, or, or maximum resources available to be scavenged. But what about the Aura coin that they cast? Do they not see Aura coin as materials? So it only gives the special resources, I think. Aha! Slave camp. We're not gonna buy them, we're gonna attack them. Okay, do we want to see how auto combat is like? You can also hide the hex grid if you think it's ugly. Show height combat log. Uh, uh, are there other factions to play as? Uh, there's two factions to play as now. If you get the demo on Steam right now, uh, Astradio, there's a free demo on Steam. You can play with two factions. Yes, there's another one. I think they're called Children of the Source. And this one is called Fosorians. And of course, children have their own music. Yeah, they're not upgraded anymore, which makes sense. Where's auto combat? Wait. Oh, that's a neat way to show hotkeys. Wait. Open ability book. Special unit ability. Highlight movement range of the units under the cursor. Tiny units. Pass turn. Show unit info move attack target. Use special abilities. Do I have? All my specials are uh, passives. I don't have any special abilities. All I have is the spell book. And this one. I have field promotion, that's it. You are now upgraded. Not just a commissar, but a seasoned commissar.
Oh, we can act again. HP pool 140. We have 128 left. Wait, did we crit? No. Now it has a special. Oh! Can jump over obstacles and throw an exploding spear. Oh, I, sh I should have tried to use the special, yeah. This is a ranged unit, so we're gonna shoot where he is. Oh shit. We're about to be hit by a torpedo. Dodge. Actually, isn't it over? Oh good. So. The torpedo never hit because he died first. Just lost one rat, man. And we scavenge one resource. Not bad, actually. We pick up some precious resources for every battle we win. This is kind of a nice skill. Ah, here we level up at level six. So we have an option to learn tracker, learn techie, or upgrade globe trotter to level two which may teach us abilities such as barbarian horde easy prey invisibility and protective field pretend to be really weak to trick others to attack you shows commander as weak <laughs> if you are playing hot seat i recommend not looking at each other's turn or is it, it may not work this is pretty cool disguise Learn Invis. Make the commander invisible to enemies until somebody approaches very near. Ah! Smoke of Deceit from Dota. Invisible until four tiles. This seems very OP. Not against AI, perhaps, depending on how they interact with it, but against players. Cast a protective field that prevents negative effects from visited objects and from abilities. Protects the commander. Okay, negative effects from visited objects. Protects the commander. Well, let's do Invis. Slaves have been dealt with. Their slaves would like to join you now. Take all Earthshakers, all Rattling Gunners, but we've got no space for the Hammerites because they're tier one. Let the rest run. Oh, really? Temple Guard though. That's a tier 2 unit. Well, I'm not going to throw away Commissars, which is a tier 6. Let the rest run. Alright. Grants bonus damage to ranged attacks. Why can't I collect it? Oh, there we go. Energy is starting to matter. Because of the spells we cast, we only have 12. Next turn, 25, and this one costs 15 to equip. Okay, now energy feels like a valid resource for which it is worth to equip a skill so you can keep interacting with the map. Greetings, Commander. I'm with the Keeper's Guild. We are not chasing profit or meddling in politics. Believe it or not, we want the Siren system to become a better place for everyone. I'm looking for a mercenary able to save a Primal's artifact from the Children of the Source. They fear sentient technology, technology, therefore they will try to destroy it. Ludians. Okay, so we have to defeat this stack. 100% not a chance. And we have to get the machine spirit. What's this? Boot camp. Commanders can upgrade units for the same price they would be in base or push units to upgrade for free but you lose 10% of the stack oh interesting it's an alpha male bootcamp not everyone can make it but if you do make it you will become a very successful husband and father and get all the girls movement now collect warrior monk temple place to hone your battle skills you can fight without losing your units and you get the added bonus of gaining some experience points 
Ah. Each commander can use this building once per cycle. Ah, so it's, uh... It's like Divinity Original Sin, where you do a... A faux combat. Where even if you die, you don't die. But it has impact. And in this case, you get experience. That's kind of interesting. Nice concept. So here we have the building zone where we can build turret, outpost, or drone dog. Let's try drone dog this time. What's this? So this is a bridge and it's guarded by a relatively powerful stack of tier two. I don't know how many you would need scouting or tracking for that or something. It looks like it's a gatekeeper to a new area. There's a bridge here, there's a bridge here, and there might be a bridge here for all I know. Four thousand to upgrade to mass liberator, and it needs ten of radiant and hey, we almost have enough for that that was just save money yeah i've seen it uh mr beard you can also make the commissar department all right we've got upgraded mass liberators now they gain 50 health 10 damage 5% chance to crit 5 defense oh that's what the second number of defense is it is after the hero's buff after the commander's buff they have a baseline defense of 37 but in the commander stack Uh, at least in combat, it shows to be higher. A lot more expensive. Is it? It, it would have to be, right? Let's see. Oh, wow. So the building itself didn't cost much. It's not like 10k for the first building and 20k for the second building. It was only 4,000, right? Not too crazy. But the unit goes from 2,000 to 3,500. But it now fires poisonous projectiles in all directions. Sick. So what I like here is that they decoupled initiative from movement speed. In Heroes of Might and Magic, movement speed and initiative are actually one and the same. But now you can have a high initiative unit that nonetheless isn't that fast. Which I think is a nice change. It's more balanced. That allows you to make units more unique. Let's make a turret here. See what it looks like. So six of them want to join me. I know I don't, Anest, Anestra. So how do I auto combat? They said auto combat's available. Oh, not available in the demo. Ah, okay, I see. Makes sense. Huh. Morale buff. Oh, we lost one. That was bad. I just lost the tier six unit. That means we're gonna lose another. Most, most likely. Unless... I upgrade him. Commander's abilities are not available. Oh? Why not? Not... Oh, not enough energy. Whoa! Damn. He killed four of my tunnel worms. 
That's a terrible development. Oh shit! There's friendly fire. Commissar Cadet is poisoned and received 7 damage. Oh no, there's no friendly fire. These things do poison, I guess. Or? Did I poison myself? Enemy units don't have poison. I have burning. The, tor the torpedo. <laughs> I did damage myself. Yeah, only one retaliate. But this one is poison too. Which makes me feel like the enemy unit does have poison. It just... Oh! You just don't know because you don't have enough commander abilities to glean such information from enemy units, even in battle. That's why. You don't get to know because you didn't invest the commander skills. You know, that's just uh, that the fact that they're a bio unit. I believe my, my theory is correct. Okay, full movement again. Monster army low. One wants to join my army for 640. All right, this this is not a good play, but I'm just gonna do it to play with them, yeah? Just for fun. And... Uh, there's... How many are there? Fight the rest, how many? Don't know. So now he only has 9 instead of 10. And look, we don't see any special abilities on the enemy Ares, right? But on ours? Oh, we also don't see any. Never mind. <laughs> Dude, the music slaps. They really nailed it. Seven. Interesting how it doesn't show the damage, it shows how many units were killed. Unless it doesn't kill one, then it shows the damage. Okay, we lost seven on our guards. I will likely play this game. Me too. We scavenge resources, one radiant. Oh, nice. Tomb of a sword master. Visited state, not visited. Learning from a stick wielding master. The commander's combat power increasing, uh, permanently increases by two. Where's my combat power? Five. I think this number just gets straight up added. Five attack, five death. Now I have seven. So we had five from other upgrades, other attributes. Refills 20 energy points. Yeah, we'll use that now. Cool, I think we got a really good idea of what the game is about i think it's very promising i like the art style it is uh it's cute kind of feels like darkest dungeon or slay the spire style animations uh, but instead of a card game it's in the turn-based strategy genre there's going to be flexibility options with how you build your town not just in the city itself but also the various resource gathering buildings that you uh, can upgrade in order to leverage more resources from it. This mining probe that we actually built a while ago that can be collected now by a visiting commander initially started by gathering up and aggregating some alloy, but I see it has now also started branching out in generating limerite. Though none of these have been added to my coffers yet, I need to go there and collect it. 
So it's both an area of interest to defend outside of your city, as well as something that ramps up. And then maybe the longer you wait, the more unique resources it produces. I'm not sure yet. There's a lot to discover, and that's what I like in these kind of turn-based strategy games. I think Silence of the Siren is very promising. There's a free demo on Steam right now. There's a small indie dev team from uh, from Prague, I believe, from Czech Republic. And I like their spiritual successor rendition of Homam. Here's a Mighty Magic. I would definitely like to play this more after this video. Let me guy let me guys know you what you think. Okay, let me try that again. Guys, let me know what you think about the game and whether you think you'll be trying it out. They have a free demo on Steam. Cool. This was Silence of the Siren. Very cool to uh, show this game to you guys. And uh, thanks to Oxymoron Games for sponsoring this video. See you guys next time. Bye.